Hey, what's going on guys? It's Sanson here and we're back with a brand new video. So today what I want to do was I want to spend some time to talk just a little bit about GraphQL because we are going to integrate GraphQL into our project. We are pretty much done with all of the bare bones of the dashboard. The reason why we're going to be using GraphQL is a couple things. Well, first of all, before we even talk about GraphQL, what exactly is GraphQL? Okay, we obviously have to always go with the introductory to something whenever we are using something new. Well, GraphQL, for those who don't know, is pretty much just a query language for your API. Okay, what does what does that mean? Okay, I literally just read off what it said over there. So to dumb it down and to make it more uh, detailed, picture it like this. Okay, you have your API, which is in REST, right? We don't use soap anymore like most people don't use soap okay nowadays people use rest when you have a rest api you have different endpoints you have different request methods that you can use you can use a get request post request put request delete etc now each request method specifies a certain uh, action to invoke if you're making a get request then you know you're only trying to read and get data or get and read data if you're making a put request you're trying to update something in the database if you're making a post you're trying to create a resource if you're trying to make a delete request you're trying to delete something from the database now with graphql the main point of graphql is to eliminate all of that instead of having a bunch of different endpoints so let's say for example if we had a rest api that just had like 20 different endpoints right so let's say we had api slash users user id and we want to get uh their details right let's say we have an api route for the user's posts, right? We want to get all of their blog posts. Let's say if we have a route that is going to retrieve, uh, I don't know, their uh, address, API slash users slash user ID. Let's just say we have another route that wants to retrieve their payment info. Let's do one more. I think you guys get the idea. Okay, let's just do education info and etc. Now, all of this data, think of it like this. You can think of all this data as relational data. Think of all this data inside a database, okay? Imagine all of these are normalized, which they pretty much are for the most part. We're going to assume that they are normalized, okay? So let's say if we have a user table or user collection, and we have a posts, and we have address, and we have payment info, and we have education info, and etc. right? Pretend these are all... Uh, individual tables and all of its data is normalized okay well you can say this user and post have some kind of relationship right a user can have many posts assume that only one post can have only one author there are some cases where an author or two authors two or more authors can uh, have a post they can write a post right but we're going to assume that only uh, one post belongs to one author now each user has one address now in real worlds there might be a situation where a user might have two addresses but again we're trying to make this as simple as possible same with payment info okay we're just going to assume one and then educate education for one okay so cool this is all relational data and in each endpoint we want to return only a specific a record right we don't want to just return like two different things like it wouldn't make sense for address to return payment info and education info one then make the argument that they might say why don't we just create a route called slash api slash users uh you pass in the user id as a route parameter and then we do something like get all user details and then this will return a payload or a response that looks something like this user okay this is some kind of json object name age email and you guys get the idea we can obviously add a whole bunch of different fields now what exactly is wrong with this okay, what exactly is wrong with having an endpoint that gets every single thing like imagine if we needed all of these routes but why don't we just create one endpoint that just fetches all the data for us? Okay, well, there's nothing stopping you from doing this. Okay, there's complete. There's nothing stopping you from actually doing this. Now, there's something called single responsibility principle. Okay, if you guys want, you guys can Google it. And the whole point is that every module, class, or even a function, really, should only be doing one thing. Okay, it should only be doing one thing. It should only have one responsibility. Get all user details has five responsibilities. Okay, and it makes it very hard to actually test a function like this. Let's say if you're writing a test case, if you're trying to write a unit test or maybe a functional test or an integration test, right? You are depending on five different database calls, right? Because you have to fetch the data from user, you have to fetch the data from details, post, payment info, education, etc. If you're, of course, if you're using, it depends on the database, right? If you're using a relational database that could hypothetically be just one database call 
okay select uh, asterisk from this table and then you would you would probably enter join that you could probably merge them into one uh sql query now if you're using NoSQL, you're gonna have to make a bunch of different uh database calls but you guys get the idea that it breaks the single rule principle where instead of doing just one thing like each one of these endpoints are being responsible for one thing. Details is going to return details, okay? Post is going to return post, address, address, and etc. But if you have one endpoint that does five different things, you're gonna have so many different dependencies. And one of these uh, functions, one of these uh, database calls could possibly break, right? It could throw an error, and the entire the entire application is just broken. So this is where GraphQL comes in. But GraphQL is very amazing. And if this doesn't convince you on why you should use GraphQL? Well, let's 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 just take a look at a couple other things. Okay, so with GraphQL, you can actually ask exactly for what you want. So let's say, for example, if you're building some kind of API, and there are sometimes where I got I have a perfect example. Actually, let me go over to PokeAPI.co. Okay, so this is an API that I used on two videos. This API returns so much data. Like, look at all of this abilities basic experience forms game indices health items moves species types so much stuff and they have a bunch of other endpoints too okay now what if i only cared about getting the move and i don't necessarily need all of this data fetched on the front end or the client right i might only want the base experience as well as the sprites i don't necessarily need everything so we can use graphql to ask for what exactly we want so hopefully that part makes sense now before i end this video and hopefully this will also convince you guys too to use graphql let's let's go to a more recent example in our dashboard if we look right over here inside dashboard page look at how many api calls we're making we're making one api call get user details Two, get guild config. Three, get guild roles. Okay, we are not even done with this dashboard. Well, I mean, when I say we, I mean you guys are probably not even done with the dashboard. You guys are probably still gonna have to get the channels, probably have to get some messages, and etc. Imagine how many API calls you're gonna have to make to the backend, how many individual API calls that fetches data. And look at how many promises we are chaining. We're we're pretty much having an entire chain of promises and it's going to look really ugly like if i want to keep going i can there's nothing stopping us from doing this but one might wonder is there a better way to solve this and yes there are better ways to possibly make this part look a little bit more prettier you could probably put everything inside an array of promises and use promise.all but that isn't going to solve you making one two three four seven 10 5, 000 api calls we want to make only one api call so i really hope all of this made sense and i really hope that this motivates you guys to get started with graphql because it's very important okay now in the next video what we're going to do is we're pretty much just going to uh install graphql as well as graphql express we're not really going to go through all the basics but i will explain everything so you guys will at least have a simple understanding of what everything is so you guys aren't left in the dust so i'll see you guys in that video peace